So how do we have alliances uh, with people uh, like Peter Boghossian and what kind of work can be done there? Yeah, he, he calls this uh, the great realignment. I just talked with him last night, incidentally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I asked him, if, given 100 days of uh, Antifa um, in Portland next to your university, are you going to vote for Trump? <laughs> uh, so we were joking back and forth about that. But yeah, he's, he was the polar opposite. He's my metaphysical foe, you might say. Mm -hmm. he's, he has, you know, the street epistemology that he tries to train people in how to treat Christians like patients, medical patients, psychiatric patients, being nice to them and asking Socratic questions and trying to help them to see that faith is a virus, whereas I say it's the virtue. And well, Peter and I, once he went through some really hard times uh, because he went after social justice critical theory well, along with two other atheist scholars because they saw the nonsense of this stuff as scholarship, uh, they hit a hornet's nest and all of a sudden the uber left, the new left, the neo-Marxists <clears throat> started coming after the left, him, he's a leftist. They're new leftists, and they were going for his job, and he was getting, um, you know, threats, and you know, being called a rapist, and and all kinds of just nasty stuff. And his office happens to be now in the uh, building with the Portland State University Police Department. And when I walked him back there after he invited me to lecture at his in his atheism seminar class on arguments for God. I walked him back to his office and I said, why is your office in the police department? And he says, I don't know. They won't tell me. I think it's for my safety. <laughs> oh, goodness. Wow. But, you know, he said he is done uh, with the atheism theism debates for the time. He says he's dedicating everything toward going after social justice. Mm -hmm. He says it is a matter of civilization here. And he's calling this from his vantage point, the great realignment, uh, where he has more in common with people like me than than with the rest of the atheists. Uh, he said that him, Dawkins, Sam Harris, and others, he said, we have lost the war within atheism. Um, even on campuses, the non-theist societies, he said, they all hate me, they're all woke. They wouldn't help me at all. So Peter Boghossian and I formed kind of an alliance and we did a university tour through several universities and we're looking at doing it again uh, in this next year on viewpoint diversity. I'm talking on the death of the university, the death of intellectual university, how social justice and identity politics are killing the university. It is stifling free thinking uh, because it's very Stalinistic. And that's what happens, mm -hmm. uh, Tony. When you get a ratio of two to one, okay. When you get five to one, okay. Uh, 12 to one, now you're talking, you know, 90%. When you get 23 to one or even 70 to one, there is a political orthodoxy there. You dare not violate the blasphemy laws. And that's what you're seeing. Even people on the left who were the, uh, you know, metaphysical foes of us 10 years ago um, are now being targeted by the uber left, the new left, this neo-Marxism. Um, and so they're looking for alliances for the sake of civilization. And I said to Peter, I said, you know, this is your problem, right? You guys. I was wondering about that because it does seem like they opened up a void there. I said, I that said, was natural, then filled by yeah. the more existentially minded atheist, right? Yeah, yeah. He, you know, I, he calls phase one um, Obergefeller, where the culture war 1.0 was finished. Um, and he says, this is 2.0. I say, no, phase one was 1880 to 1930, right. when naturalism assumed control of the universities. Phase two began right in 1930s, but over in Germany, mm -hmm. and then came over here. And over time, it, it was brewing, but something happened when the rise of the inequality of the number of left to right uh, professors was happening. It was just the perfect timing, perfect timing. Everything was ready to go. And now all of a sudden it's spread and the naturalists, especially in the hard sciences, cannot control this Frankenstein that has emerged. So I said, well, this was your fault, but I'll help yeah. you with it. <laughs> well, I, I, you're right, because it's interesting. It's sort of, a, it's very ironic. I mean, the irony is sort of deep here because I've always felt like the, the sort of the, the Bertrand Russell strain of atheism that, you know, uh, 
you know, the very, you know, logic centered uh, nat natural sciences can get us to, you know, but they, there was always a, you know, the, the, a negative critique of religious belief. But once the critique was done, there was never anything else on offer to sort of fill the void of, of uh, you know, of religion or religious belief or Christianity even more specifically. So, you know, they, people just packed up their analytical tools and went home. Right. But then, you know, Marx, and if you read again, this book by McIntyre, Marx is, uh, like you said, the, the economic theory is sort of down the line of what he was trying to do. He's trying to answer existential questions uh, about yeah. human, the human condition that I think the sort of more scientific atheists just didn't really try and answer, you know, so that, uh, you know, the Marxist then comes in and says, well, if we, if religion is false or Christianity is false, we'll offer you sort of a new alternative to that. Here it is, you know? <laughs> So um, anyways, that's, that's how I've tended to, to see what we're up against. And, you know, and there's yeah. something there theologically where we talk about social justice. It's a theological, con right? It is a theological concept. And uh, I was reading some articles by Andrew Sullivan, who is by no means a, a staunch conservative, yeah, but no. who was one of the first ones to really start calling sort of the critical race theory and social justice phenomena a new religion of sorts because right. it does yeah, seem to be That's right. answering trying to answer religious questions that mm -hmm. people have and existential uh concerns of just the, of the human condition right um that sort of again the classical atheist uh modernist wasn't really interested in answering or maybe even you know bothering to touch on it all Yeah, and so when you come back to you know this notion classical liberalism, which is right. where Peter would you know call himself, he would say fits into that that mold. These people believe in the correspondence theory of truth. That truth is that which corresponds with reality. Now they only want scientific truth. They only want truth knowable by the five senses. Right? They're they're modernists. Uh, they're enlightenment uh, thinkers in that way. Mm -hmm. But right. at least they believe that truth is real and knowable and objective discoverable even right if, even if only through science yeah. and they at least have the demeanor where you can have a debate with them mm -hmm. uh with these postmodernists who on the one hand say that knowledge is but a social construction of reality right uh, according to critical theory um and then they try to find room for objectivity in their universal knowledge claims from an oppressed angle from what's called standpoint epistemology, uh, they don't believe in having conversations. They they say that uh, you know debate is a form of hate. Um, when Peter and I were uh, getting ready to come to one of the universities in Utah, we had one um, new leftist group oppose us, write a letter to the president, and call us logical fascists uh, because we were bringing Western colonialist. Uh, oppressive tools to the game that have been mm -hmm. used to oppress those who we are oppressing for centuries now. Mm -hmm. so As if this Asian and African diversity. thinkers had, had never used logic before. Or, or right. And then the, you know, it doesn't even seem ethnographically accurate, right, to say that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the Smithsonian Institute, what did they do? Yeah, right. Lasted two days, yeah. some article robin d'angelo i think had a hand in it yeah yeah um, yeah i saw that That showed that uh, these things are western logical thinking like hard reality <laughs> you know like uh, yeah. scientific method and things like that right yeah, yeah so these i mean oh they just ticked off a whole lot of african americans with that right right that was very <laughs> it was well more than just form but i'll leave it at that